I got a new job. We'll also talk about AI-generated art, miniaturized retro consoles, and more, coming up on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. Yes, that's right, I got a new job. And although I'm no longer at Microsoft, we still wanted to continue this show, which for the newcomers is a weekly roundup of the latest developer news alongside some pop culture, some nerdy tech, and Wordle clones, because 2022 has been very, very big. It's been a very big year for Wordle. So. Anyway, along with a new job, the download now has a new home, which is right here on the GitHub YouTube channel. So please like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, you know the drill. Um, the plan is for the show to remain pretty similar to what it was like before, uh, but please let me know what type of content or news you would like to see more of in the comments down below. And I'm super excited about my new job, but I'm equally as excited to keep this show going. And as for my hoodie this week, it is fast, RIP one out for the startup that truly lived up to its name, um, you know, went fast, died fast, lived fast. All right, let's get into the news. So first things uh, first, since I am now at GitHub, it makes sense to share that Git 2.36 is now available. And one of the biggest features in this release is the new dash dash remerge dash diff option. And as Taylor explains in the blog post that I've uh, got linked below announcing this release, this adds some nuance to the git show command and makes showing diffs in commits with merge conflicts more understandable. And um, in addition to that feature, fsync configuration is now more flexible, which should be really useful for server operators. And there is now some new stricter repository ownership checks. Um, this was a feature that was um, also released as a security patch last week for Git 2.35 and earlier. And basically starting with Git 2.35.2 and obviously continuing with this release, Git has changed the default behavior to prevent users from executing Git commands in a repository that's owned by a different user than the current one. And this is important from a security perspective. And I think that as a default, this makes sense. But although there was a way to bypass the check using the new safe.directory configuration um, to include trusted repos owned by other users, uh, there's now an option to set a value to consider all Git repos safe regardless of owner. So it effectively turns that new feature off. And I know that some users and organizations had some of their CI and CD workflow stuff break or just found the new behavior onerous. So I think it's great that it's now easier to configure for your needs. And uh, one last thing to put someone off from upgrading. There are a bunch of uh, new smaller updates uh, too. More details are linked down below uh, in the show notes in the description. All right, moving on, uh, the topic of GitHub. Dependabot, which is a, a tool that automates and checks for out of date or insecure libraries in your dependencies and then basically generates a pull request so that you can update them. It has a new feature that will offer even more insight into how your code might be impacted by a vulnerability. So now Dependabot alerts will also surface whether your code is calling a vulnerable code path so you can more effectively deal with those types of alerts. And it's um, using uh, GitHub's precise code navigation engine to figure out basically if a repo is directly calling a vulnerable function. Um, I've got a blog post linked uh, below that goes into the details of how this feature works. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and it, it's starting uh, with support for 79 vulnerable Python advisories from uh, PIP right now, but the plan is to expand it to more things and more ecosystems in the future. All right, now I want to talk about one of the coolest use cases for AI that I've ever seen, AI-generated art. That's right, I'm talking about Dolly 2, which is from OpenAI, and it is an AI system that can create realistic images of art using descriptions in natural language. And the name is a portmanteau of Wally and Salvador Dali because the use of AI creates these like surrealist images. And as the name suggests, this is the second version of the system. And it, um, it isn't open to more than just a select group of researchers right now, but there's a wait list, which I'm definitely on, but the image examples that the team has shown off are just incredible and also incredibly bizarre. For instance, teddy bears working on a new AI research underwater with 1990s technology produces the image, which is just unbelievable. Or what about this one? A bowl of soup that looks like a monster knitted out of wool. It can even be used to edit existing images or create stylistic variations. And I, I know that this kind of seems sort of dystopic, but as a lover of art and surreal art at that, I think this is incredible, it blows my mind. So I've got a link to the Dolly webpage, their Instagram, if you wanna learn more and see more examples. 
Okay, moving on from the surreal to just the plain cool, I want to give a shout out to the team over at Framework. Now, Framework is a startup that makes x86 laptops, but the idea is that um, the laptop is easy to repair, or upgrade, or tinker with. And I actually bought one of these last year, and it's really amazing, especially as a first product from a new company. And the whole idea of Framework is that you can easily replace the screen, or the Wi-Fi module, or the keyboard, or any of the other components, including the main board, yourself, without having to deal with glue, or weird screws, or onerous right to repair processes. And they actually designed it so that you, if you wanted to take the main board out of the laptop, which is like an 11th gen um, Intel laptop chip, um, and you wanted to put in some RAM and, and an SSD and connect to an external power supply, you could just use it as an, in, as an independent computer from the rest of the laptop shell, you know, kind of like an Intel Nook. Well, now Framework is actually selling the main board on its own, but what I like even better is that they've open sourced the CAD file and all the, the electrical documentation, and they've put it up on GitHub, and they even have um, 3D, um, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess designs for cases you can print out to, you know, store it yourself if you wanted to. Anyway, I've got a, a link in the show notes down below to Framework, their blog post, and their GitHub repo. It's great. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So I discovered this through my old pal, my old pal Andrew Lazuski over at Gizmodo. Andrew, thank you as always for finding the best stuff. Um, okay, so over the past five years or so, we've seen a ton of miniaturized video game consoles. But this is one for a system that I'd never even heard of. And I consider myself something of a video game historian. So in the early 1980s, there was a system called the Vectrex, which had its own special CRT display, and it could draw scan lines in any direction to simulate the appearance of 3D. Um, now, unfortunately, Vectrex was uh, the victim of the 1983 video game crash. Damn you, E.T., um, but it still has a, a pretty robust community. And so Brendan over at Retro Game On basically created a log of building his own mini Vectrex using a Raspberry Pi 2 and some other stuff. And I, I gotta say, I've, I've got a link to, to, to Brendan's write-up below. It's just so cool to see what he's done. And um, it got me thinking about like what kind of miniaturized uh, video game consoles I would like to see in the future. I think for me, I want to see the N64 most of all. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, and also let me know about what comments you have on any of our other stories and, and thoughts on uh, what kind of news you want to see more of. All right, well, that does it for me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and you know like it. Uh, and also, please subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel because you'll be getting even more great dev content. And uh, we will see you next time.